It's Dry Bear. I've been putting a considerable amount of time into the once human closed beta test so that you can figure out through me what exactly the game is about. And I'm happy to report that it has a lot of great things going for it. In fact, it might actually be one of the next great MMOs. But first, let's talk about what the game actually is so that everyone's on the same page. Once Human is marketed as a multiplayer open world survival game set in a strange post-apocalyptic future. As far as art direction and art style, it reminds me a lot of games like Control or Death Stranding that have that pseudo-realism aspect to it, but a lot of supernatural distortions in what we might expect to see, chromatic aberrations, bending of light, and some twisting of real-life elements to make them seem strange. You'll find tears in space fabric, monsters that are humanoids in business suits but have been and distorted to have balloon heads or giant mutant buses with long legs that stomp around on the roads dropping off mutant creatures. It is a third person shooter and a survival game so you will be gathering materials building up your base and adding to a territory and you also encounter tons of enemies of varying levels and engagement types using realistic weapons like machine guns, light machine guns, sniper rifles, crossbows, pistols, shotguns, axes, baseball bats and the like. There's a ton of PvE as you go through leveled areas and zones and you encounter more and more resources and materials that you can bring back to your base and install. The gear itself also has set bonuses and stats on it that you can craft and improve and modify and there are boss battles that you'll encounter as well as part of the story and also challenge modes to test yourself or in a multiplayer group of four to eight. There's also PvP realms that you can sign up for which means that you'll be constantly PvPing if you're on a PvP realm, and even on the PvE realms where you can't attack other players in their base or in the open world if you just want to build, there are PvP modes that you can encounter during this that are very localized or as part of a queue that you can jump into and do as limited PvP if you are on the PvE realm, and of course there's open PvP on the PvP realms. Now since the world is based in supernatural effects, you too are supernatural, you are what's referred to as a meta-human and that is why the game is called Once Human, as you were once human, but now you are something more. You gain psionic and telepathic powers that allow you to unlock new abilities, control deviations in time and space, and these powers can be harnessed and utilized in different ways to specialize your own kind of playstyle. And all of these supernatural powers are harnessed through your cradle, which is your back attachment for your character. You have two different areas to look at. The medics are your upgrades for your character, your skill trees that are in different categories of survival, infrastructure, crafting in different directions, managing your system and your base, as well as crafting different items that might work for your vehicle, for your defense of your base, uh, so on and so forth. And your cradle overrides specify your combat style. You'll get all these different unlocks for different play styles, like being able to modify the kind of weapon you're using, refill ammo, add status effects to it, uh, specialize in fire effects or lightning effects or psionic effects. And the base building caught me by a big surprise because it's actually quite extensive and detailed and usually when I play survival games I don't expect too much when it comes to auxiliary systems. With the base building you can create a massive territory that starts small and you can start upgrading it more and more but you're able to add a bunch of size and shape and complexity to it. You've got many options for adding in roofs, different materials for the creation of it, the interior and the exterior rotation of items and materials that connect everything together, the glue of your base. Through the talent tree system, you'll be unlocking new stations for crafting and upgrading and for managing your gameplay. And as part of the exploration, you'll constantly unlocking and discovering new materials, furniture, and upgrades for your base that are unique to just the open world that you'll be exploring and encountering. You do have vehicles that you can upgrade, unlock, and craft in the game that start simple with a basic motorcycle, but you can start working towards all kinds of different Ford four-wheel vehicles that you can add weapons to or you can use with your squad and then of course you have garages inside of your main territory that you can use to upgrade your weapons or show them off. You can also add defenses to the base, turrets, traps, encampments, reinforcements as even on PvE servers you still will get attacked by enemy monsters and there are ways to gather loot by triggering transformation processes inside of your base. For example this machine
sheet right here is the Stardust Resonant Filter. You will put a special item that you get from elite enemies out in the world into it, and there's a process that you trigger that while active will summon enemies to attack it, and when the process is finished, you will get special materials or resources that you can use to unlock new recipes, unlock new gear, or upgrade gear. And what's great about this is they included a lot of quality of life in the building system that makes things super easy. For example, in the middle of your territory is gonna be the territory core. And from this, you can actually see every bit of your materials and structures that you have in your base. And there's a single button that allows you to repair everything that is in your territory all at once using the storage of materials you have in any accessible storage box that exists on your territory. And what's cool about this is you can move your territory at any point in time. There's a cool down on it as well if you decide to do it multiple times in a row but you can several times a day if you want move your territory and it moves everything in your territory all in one go with a single press of a button so you'll be able to bring up your building menu there is a button that allows you to move your entire territory somewhere else and by pressing that you can move all of it in one go to a different spot so if you level up to a higher area on the main map you decide that you want to go somewhere new or somewhere different that has different reasons resources, you can very easily just travel to that area and instantly teleport your entire territory to that location and use that as your main base, including all of the fortifications and defenses, resources, and everything in between. Which is incredible for both PvP and PvE servers, because you'll be able to relocate if you need new resources. The first place I started up my base didn't have many wildlife nearby, which means I wasn't able to get a lot of hides for crafting gear and weapons, and so I was able to relocate to an area that had a lot of deer nearby, so I could farm that and of course as you move into higher level areas with more boss battles on the main map you'll be able to relocate if you decide that you want to be nearer to the higher level materials as you level up it is still a survival game so you will be gathering materials and going around and interacting with the environment finding higher and higher quality of materials not only the natural materials that exist in the environment but also the materials that you can find in strongholds by killing enemies and collecting scrap or by engaging in dungeons and boss battles to get special special materials that you can use for crafting and other means. What's cool about this is they've been very generous with the inventory and weight limit. You can actually go over your limit by a sizable amount and even as you go over your limit of weight, you won't start slowing down very much. You can very easily just teleport back to your base and drop off whatever you have and teleport back around. At any point, as long as you're not in the middle of a dungeon, you can teleport back to your territory with a 10 minute cooldown for free, which means, and this has no limitation on what you're carrying with you you can be fully overloaded with materials or you just finished a boss battle you can teleport back to your material your territory no matter where it is in the world and that will go on a 10 minute cooldown which i think is more than fair compared to most games that we've been playing over the last couple years on top of that you also find these teleportation towers scattered around the world they're usually at every major poi there's one near every single major dungeon and boss fight and there's some that are just kind of near towns or in different spots around the world and as long as you're standing near a teleportation tower which your territory counts as one of these you can freely teleport between these without cooldown by just spending a very available resource that you'll find by playing the game on top of that you can summon and resummon your selected vehicle anywhere that you want so as long as you press g and set a location you'll be able to summon your selected vehicle to that spot it'll appear instantly and you can jump in and start driving you still do have to uh, put in fuel and you'll run out of fuel and it has durability as well but you can very very easily even though I just summoned my vehicle here I can go summon over here if I wanted to so on some occasions where my vehicle may not have the horsepower to go up a hill I'll get out run up to the top of the hill and resummon my vehicle so I can get back into it and start driving from there so even though in the last 40 hours I've only explored this part in the bottom right of the main world as I pushed further and further into the world there's many options for being able to fast travel and drive around or get over obstacles in order to traverse the world around me on top of that it has a adopted the new world style of respawn at any point you can summon a campsite with ver with just getting gravel and logs you'll find from hitting any kind of rock material and any kind of tree you can place down the campsite and this will serve as a respawn point for you so as if you die you can just freely respawn any respawn point either your main territory a nearby town or if you set up a campsite so just like new world people will put these campsites up near a stronghold or a dungeon 
and they'll use it as a respawn point if they get into trouble. On top of that, it has the basics of crafting, so if you need to boil water to keep up your thirst meter or your food meter, or you need to craft some basic materials like ammunition or food, you can very easily do that here, as it also serves as that function. There are tons of open world monsters, and they be getting more and more complex as I've been leveling up. They start out pretty straightforward as these melee mutants that don't really have much intelligence to them, to starting getting into humanoids that have robots that drone around and heal them or set up traps or ways that flank you and uh, do tons of damage or have defense and special elite monsters that have special weak spots you have to hit or mechanics you have to avoid. Inside of the dungeons are these major boss battles that are very much like Destiny in that way that you actually have mechanics you have to do, things you have to deal with. There's a tree ant that spawns tentacles that you have to destroy before in order to deal damage to the tree ant, a giant spider that will go and mist up the whole arena and disappear. You have to find these eggs to destroy so you can trigger the next phase of it and have tons of different mechanics you have to avoid. And while not all of them are fully fleshed out, there's definitely a lot there that could be blooming over time as they move towards release. Now you can play solo like I have been. Some of the boss battles have been challenging from a solo perspective, especially starting towards like level 25 and up. There's also ways that you can set up four, up to four man teams with other players. You can even uh, shout out in a special channel for LFG saying, hey, I want to do this boss or this, this world event and people can join into your team dynamically if they want to be a part of it. You can also have people officially join your team and join in part of your territory if you want to share a base together. And there's even war bands and hive groups which go up to eight players which can also share a territory together so that territory can get bigger and bigger and bigger and you can have a main stronghold for your group. The world events were more varied than I was expecting. There are tons of different types from PvP types like Cargo Shuffle where this flaming truck drives along the roads and eventually stops stops and this jellyfish supernatural monster starts infesting people and making them flag as PvP to everyone around you even on a PvE server and then you have to kill that person that person gets points by killing other players and the other players get points by killing them and then the jellyfish will jump to a new person and the game continues until the event is over and you get rewards at the end. You can find stand and capture events where miners are trying to mine from an area but their mining activities are drawing monsters to them and you have to stand and defend them as they do their work. Or even I found this uh, reference to a Ghibli movie, The uh, Hale's Moving House, which is a giant house that has legs and a sentience that will, uh, you'll have to find a way to get up on top of it, get inside of it, and then you have to break furniture to solve the puzzle in order to get loot inside of it, and the house will collapse down, kind of like those bells in Elden Ring. And I found that even just exploring the world to do the main story or do the main dungeons and boss fights, I am constantly being hit in the face with world events, public crisis events, random quests that pop up randomly that are only in a specific time, and it feels like even for a beta, there's a good amount of content there. On top of that, there's a surprising amount of secondary and tertiary content. There's a good amount of mechanics that goes into planting and farming your own crops. You have to have the right fertilizer for the right crop. You have to give it good irrigation and the proper lighting. If the weather is improper, the lighting goes down, or the water amount to the uh, planter's box or the farming uh, plot that you're trying to use is improper. You'll either lose the crop or won't have strong yield. As you're traveling around, you'll also find what are the equivalent of Pokemon Shinies for materials, which are deviant versions or supernatural shifted versions of the resources that will uh, randomly and very rarely appear in the open world. But if you collect them, you can make super awesome consumables or buffs or gear from them. There's a full-fledged fishing system with bait and types of materials. There's even world events that will pop up near town that will have you in a 15 minute window, a surge of a certain fish that you'll want to fish and then trade in for special rewards. The base itself can have electricity and all kinds of different distributions of advanced mechanics like that and how you wire things up and how you build things in your base make a big difference on the overall efficiency of it. Even in the base building itself, they included a ton of features for being able to craft and build from a far distance. And even if the distance isn't far enough for you, you can also enter into a flight mode at any time, which allows you to move 
move away from your character and build things from that character even though you are far away. So you can go into this free flight uh, form and just move around and build and affect your base. And when you're done, you can just go back to your character and keep moving, which I think speaks volumes to the level of personal touch and care the devs have put into making the game feel good. The fact that you can instantly with one button repair every item and structure in your base without having to get a repair hammer and go to manually each area and hit it with a repair hammer to repair it. The fact that you can instantly teleport to your territory from everywhere on the map and that cooldown is only a measly 10 minutes for how useful it is. The fact that you can go over your weight limit without being super encumbered and still teleport and travel with that teleportation. The fact that you can easily and instantly teleport your entire base and everything in it to anywhere else on the world map really lends itself to a cozy and fun survival crafting experience. Now the game is meant to be built on a seasonal system and I know some people especially ARPG fans might be well adjusted to seasonal systems and some people may not and the big idea here is that um, you know especially in any game where you have a lot of long-term buildup you want to offer the opportunity for people to start fresh together with other players so you're not coming in to a world they say a built server with other players already in it they might have a impenetrable fortress built with all of the highest tier equipment and technology and you have no chance of competing so they do have a permanent server they have eternal land but they also have seasonal mechanics that will unlock bit by bit and these show up in the journey that you'll see inside of game which gives you things to accomplish things to achieve crafting technology to unlock places to go and it helps you kind of explore every area of the game and each season there will be season goals that you can unlock and milestones that you can meet and they're also based on a time window as well that will open every week so the first week certain technologies will be capped and limited and certain encounters or dungeons or world events will be available and every single week the amount or difference in those will change pretty dramatically so that each week feels different from the last and everyone is kind of leveling up together so everyone has time to move through the phases at a reasonable pace on top of that they've mentioned that they'd like each season to have kind of its own theme so it does kind of have that arpg touch to it where maybe the cradle powers or the mimetics or the psionic powers that are available to your character and to your team is different each season so that you can have a little bit more freshness coming to that construction and overall i've just been thoroughly impressed with the amount of content and the amount of activities to do as well as the thought and care taken in each individual aspect of the game and i'm actually you know as someone who really wasn't didn't have once human on my radar and now definitely is that gives you a lot of ways to customize your character and explore the world and share it with friends and have all kinds of different experiences for a really cool mmo offering if you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.